We'd like to welcome Eleanor Hensinger from uh, the University of Bristol. So Eleanor, you're a, a PhD student in machine learning and pattern analysis area. Uh, could you tell us a little bit, little bit about what you do in your, in your general daily life? Well, I'm in the Intelligent Systems Laboratory at the University of Bristol. I work with Professor Nella Cristianini and we work on analyzing online news, especially in my work. It is about which news people feel attracted towards and um, then we look at also why uh, this happens and why they find different news more appealing than others. Great. So, do um, you find that, uh, you, th you think it's interesting for society to, to know about your, your research? you think it's an important uh, branch of science for society in some sense? Well, I guess every scientist will say that his or her work is important. Um, I think in our case it is, the data is very real life data. So, um, and I think it's very interesting for people to find out that it's possible to measure why, for example, people feel attracted or if people find interesting how tabloid newspapers present their news, for example. So uh, when we think about uh, going back a little bit to your earlier sort of uh, interest in science, can you think of anything specific which really motivated you to have a career in science? I think in school it was the fact that I had uh, very good mathematics teachers, very encouraging, they were, well they were encouraging all students. Um, so this made definitely a difference. Later in studies, I think computer science I started to study because it was something something that is everywhere in our life mm. which means we can we can actually influence how what our lives are going to be like in the next years because we are essentially the people who invent things um, and so I was aware there was mathematics and computer science I enjoyed mathematics let's let's give it a try it seems like um, maybe some of these more mathematical things are quite solitary activities in a way versus maybe some more uh, collaborative kind of efforts. How do you how do you feel about that? Do you spend a lot of your time working alone, or do you so you discuss with colleagues, or I know you have meetings with your supervisor, but a lot of the time I guess you probably are spending on your own. Is is that true, or I think it depends on the area as well. Uh, computer science offers a lot of possibilities. If somebody would like to work more by themselves, they definitely have the possibility. If somebody enjoys working very collaboratively in very like teams, this is very well possible as well. Of course, if you start off as a research student, you, you can't know everything. So you're very dependent on information, advice, experience especially, um, all this. And also just ideas, people giving you ideas from other areas. So this you can only get if you talk to other people. So, is, um, so you're quite at the beginning, I, I presume, of your, your career in science, your PhD student, but is there even at this stage any kind of advice that you let's imagine somebody's coming entering into their PhD for example or beginning in their science career is there any advice that you you would like to to give to them perhaps about how they might want to approach that career in science I think first of all I would um, talk to already people who are already PhD researchers ask them about their life ask them about their relationship with the supervisor, find out, get, get to know also PhD students who work with, the, with your future supervisor um, to establish this connection in the first place because this is very important. Um, and then enjoy it. It's, it's a very, it is um, a difficult task, it's a big task, one never knows. What, what is coming at the beginning of the three, four years. 
it's not possible to estimate what it's going to be like at the end. But everybody goes through this situation. Everybody survives, everybody comes out stronger and wiser and and as a skilled researcher, and that's the task. So some people uh, might view science as a little bit of a kind of unfashionable, not a very sexy subject area, kind of maybe boring even. So there are quite a lot of negative attitudes in, in science, in community to, towards science, and I'm just wondering how you feel about that, how, how do you respond to that, do you think it's true even? I think there is an image of a scientist, especially of a computer scientist, um, which is not true anymore. It might have been it was a very somebody who does not talk to anybody else and just does their thing. Maybe it was necessary at a certain time or in certain fields. Um, now uh, there is definitely a large variety of people everybody is welcome and everybody can contribute with their skills, um, definitely. Um, so what I think is, I think it's up to us. If you decide to do science, you are a representative and you are a unique person as well. You're not only a scientist. So just be yourself and you will shape, we, we are shaping the image of yeah. science. And do you think you, you personally have particular characteristics which are, are useful? Are you, are you creative or is there some thing that you feel is particularly unique about your, your own sort of what you bring personally to your research? I think, well, as there are skills that many people have, I think analytical skills to be very, very exact, very precise. You have to be creative, definitely. And it's, it's also a matter of communication. If you cannot communicate what you're doing in a language that your audience can follow, you can do the best research, but it's not going to help anybody um, or to bring anybody forward in a way. So it's a matter of being able to talk to other people. It's very much about networking as well. Um, and and go out there and meet new people that you have not never spoken to and just just do it which is also not a difficult like not an easy task do you feel as, as a woman that uh, you have an advantage there in, in networking or do you feel it's more I, I just see a lot of uh, male computer scientists and I wonder sometimes if they have the those so social skills which are, are useful for networking perhaps as a woman it's easier is that possible or? I can imagine because society assumes or has been conditioned in a way to believe that women have better networking skills, that they, they can enjoy this advantage then again, that um, maybe it's a little bit easier because people are already expecting it. Um, I have seen, I've seen men and women who were very shy. I've seen men and women who are very outgoing. I think it's, it doesn't need to be, it's either male or female, it's, we're all individuals. So going back to your earlier uh, sort of thinkings about when you wanted to become a scientist, so you spoke that you were uh, attracted to computers at a, from a young age, but was there anything else that you were also attracted to? I guess there might have been other directions which you could have taken rather than computer science. Is there anything you can think of there? Yes, definitely. I think I think everybody who has good grades in school can choose from a variety of things. I, I was thinking about architecture, I was thinking about uh, literature history. I think once I was in computer science and I saw, even though during the studies I was one of a few women, I saw that we all struggled in the same way. It was not a matter of how much experience you had, whether you have programmed before or not, whether you have designed your own video games or not. It was, we all had the same difficulties with mathematics because it was all new to us. So it's not a matter, it's not a matter of gender. What I found very, very helpful and definitely made a difference to me was that I, I saw a role model who was a female professor, one of all professors that we had. And that made a big difference because 
it is one thing to see somebody talking to you. It is another thing to be able to connect to somebody and think, oh, hold on, if they can do it, then I might be, doing, be able to do it as well. Um, and I think this is exactly what people are talking about if they say, well, we need to increase more women somewhere, because it's about them being seen by other people. And it's also changing how society sees them. Um, if society is used that there are many, that there are computer science professors who are men and women, it will not be perceived as anything unusual. But so far it is. And people ask, well, you're doing this as a woman? Well, that's great. You're like, why? Is it, where's the difference? So do, do you think there's anything that, so you talked about mentoring, as a, that was very important to you. Is there any, anything else that you think that society could do to encourage women to become scientists and to, or to stay in science? I think in general there is um, a trend that we attach to, to boys and girls different characteristics and it's difficult to get rid of um, for adults. It's difficult to, to notice when, you, when they're doing this. But um, it's very easy for children to pick up those things and to believe that this is how it goes. If they see that women are always doctors and men are always engineers, this is what they will assume that this is what the world looks like. And then they will not consider becoming an engineer, but they will consider becoming a doctor. So society has to increase the variety as well. The same for boys. Mm. If they see that there are um, nurses, male nurses, for example, to the same extent as female nurses, this will not be an unusual job for a, for a boy to consider. So I think it's, it's both sides. We need to change role models everywhere. Um, and also the perception of, for example, how society sees um, when men and women take time for family, it needs to be something positive, both times. And at the moment, I'm not convinced that it is seen as equally important. So I was also thinking, I mean, this, this idea of having a, a family, you know, it's this kind of, uh, it's uh, an important thing and also um, but to get a career in science, it's also, it takes a long time, right? There's a, there's a long and a big personal investment there, and this, I guess, can often delay the uh, having a family. So how do you, uh, so you're just starting out, but I'm wondering how you look to the future. Are you optimistic about the possibility of maintaining both, say, a scientific career and having a family or a sort of a, some kind of family life? and or is that something that you're you're already already starting to think about or have concerns about or what is your general is it something very far away still for you or? well i think i'm a general an optimistic person <laughs> so um but there are examples there are very good examples how it's possible for men and women to have a career and to have family so given this um i know that it's possible and this is how I approach the situation. Of course, I don't have children yet, um, so maybe, maybe everything I think will be totally uh, different once once you're in the situation. But I know that there are women who who became professors and who had children. So I know this is again the role model example. If you know it, you know that it's possible. And there are different ways, and I think every couple has to find their own way how they will combine this. And it's a matter of having a real partnership where you actually divide tasks 50-50 or you negotiate your way. But it's a matter of doing this inside the relationship and having the acceptance by society in the way how you organize your life. And actually having seen it as positive if one of the partners, or if maybe even both at the same time, take some time off for family and it's seen as good whether it is a man or the woman who does it. And what about um, competition? Because I, I think probably it's, it's true to say that there are more PhD students and younger researchers than perhaps positions, uh, permanent positions available for them. 
So in that sense, there's necessarily a competitive, it's a competitive process to get those uh, senior positions. How do you feel about the the competitive process? Uh, I think sometimes it may be the case that women are are less naturally competitive in a, in a social sense, and whether or not you feel at a disadvantage as a woman because of that. I personally believe women are very much conditioned to be less competitive, um, or they're given these attributes um, in advance. Uh, competitiveness will be everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go to. I don't think there is a job where there is no comp competition. Um, and if you're good, if you know what you're doing, there, there will be a possibility for you to put your talents and your skills to good use. And good use is what you decide what is good use. Um, I think it doesn't matter where you stay, whether in academia or um, you go into industry or you do your own thing and start your own company. It will be competitive everywhere, but if you enjoy what you're doing, you will be able to face this competition. So, what's next for you? Well, are you you're getting close, I presume, to the end yeah. of your PhD. Um, are you excited about the future? What are, what are, your, what are your plans? I, I have many directions that I'm exploring. Um, so it, I think part of, part of finishing the PhD is that you learn so many skills, like analytical skills, like communication skills, and you have them employed already, and you know what works and what not. You know, um, it gives a lot of self-confidence at the time, let's say, that there is, there is a place for me to, to put them into good use. Um, and I think, for at the moment, that's the only thing I can say. Great. Elena, thank you very much. Thank you.